Are there any questions about the assignment so far? Uh, this is your last assignment, so it's due uh, Friday at 6. Oh, yes, sir. I have one more question. Go ahead. Uh, I found the documentation for the compare to method and its implementation. Yeah. Um, but now I'm confused because uh, the implementation says it should return negative one if the one object is less than the other object, but I don't know what is exactly yeah. that means. Like, what are we comparing? The date of birth or? So you would you would compare the fields. Um, if you were to sort a person, you would sort it maybe based on the ID number and then the the name. It's it's actually up to you. The so, key the key. The key thing we're looking for is, can you declare an abstract method in an abstract class and then implement it or override it in a subclass? Um, you're welcome to figure out your own way for actually sorting the, the objects. Um, but I would recommend doing something like sort on the ID number and then the name. Okay, so. Yeah, because the ID numbers are guaranteed to be unique, right? Yes. Yeah. And names might be equal. Someone might have the same name. Yeah. No okay, so. Yeah, you're welcome. So um today is not actually a today is not actually going to be a big uh content lecture. It's more we finished we finished Java. Where do we go from here? Um, so I'm going to give you a whole bunch of resources to look at, um, but starting tomorrow's next lecture. So tomorrow, Friday will still be a consultation session, but tomorrow, Monday and Wednesday next week will be uh, review revision lectures. And then next week, um, Thursday and Friday are the, is the um, test. If I have that correct. Yes. Thursday and Friday next week is the test. So, um, yeah. Are there any questions otherwise so far? Yeah, I think some people have asked about um, where they can find like practice resources and all of this. Uh, I'll make sure to submit all of this as part of the announcement as well. Um, and I'll submit it under the course resources. So today's like a very informal lecture. Don't worry about it too much. And then tomorrow we'll start the um, we'll start the revision. Yes, you. I see we have a comment, a question. Um, hello. Yeah, I have a question on the um, assignment mm -hmm. uh, for the driver attribute. Yeah. Um, does it have a type? And I don't know how to actually um, declare it in the ride record class. So in the ride record, um, actually, let me grab my, sorry, let me grab my thing here. So in the assignment, you're asked to create three, um, three classes. First of all, a person class, and then a passenger class and a driver class, right? Yes. Yeah. So when we say the ride record as an attribute that is a driver, what type would it be? Uh, let me just quickly do this. Wouldn't it be of type driver? Yes, exactly. So uh, something we need to just make sure we understand. Um, I'll share my screen on here as well. Something we need to be able sh to make sure we understand is that um, when we have a class, when we declare a class in Java of some type, in this case driver, right? This is actually declaring a type. So when you create an object, you will say it is of type driver and then my driver is equal to new driver. Right? 
So when we, in Java, when we declare a variable, it goes type the identifier of the variable or the variable name, and then we assign it some value, right? There's some value here. So attributes are just variables that belong to a class. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes, so so um, Gabriella, do you have a good idea of what type the driver attribute would be? It would be okay. driver then. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, it's about five past. I think we, we can get started. I mean, it's not a, a super formal lecture. Um, but someone has asked to get some more resources on how to practice Java, etc. cetera. Um, so just for the people just joining us, um, today we're just going to talk about where can you go now that you've learned Java? What can you do? Um, what, what sort of things can you look forward to? So first and foremost, where can you practice more Java? Obviously you have your test in about a week's time. Um, the test will consist of like a, a, a answer question and answer se section, much like your tutorials where you'll be asked, you know, multiple choice, maybe some short answer, um, short answers, you'll be asked like matching questions and so on. And then the other part of the test will be a small programming exercise. So it'll be split into two sections, the first being kind of theory and the second being a bit more practical. So if you're looking for um, places to practice Java, um, I've recommended these things over here. Please note that um, Hackerank and Exorcism are actually language, language, well, they're all language agnostic. But something like Exorcism will have a whole uh, language path. So if you go over here and you go and type in Java, you can see there's 130 different exercises, but they also have a syllabus for you to go through. So they say like there are 17 key concepts. So there's basics, strings, booleans, characters, conditionals, like they've got a whole um, kind of learning path for you. You should see, you know, like all of this, um, all of this you've done before. We just touched on generics. Uh, they've got like a whole bunch of stuff, interfaces, constructors, inheritance, right? And then within each of these, they'll give you like a little section on what it is. And then they'll ask you to um, do some exercises with it. So there's two exercises related to constructors and they'll kind of give you a recap. So I highly recommend you have a look at exorcism and then you can like explore the concepts or whatever. Right, so this is it's very useful. Um, I myself, when Exorcism was just starting out, I've contributed to the, the project itself. It's actually um, open source. So you can have a look over here. Um, there's 12,000 contributors. I'm down here somewhere. Um, so it's actually an open source project where you can, you know, hack on it yourself if you want. Um, so I would highly recommend Exorcism. The other one I would recommend is also HackerRank. So if you go to HackerRank, uh, they'll ask like four companies or four job seekers. Uh, you can just say four job seekers. It's, it doesn't really matter because they also have a whole bunch of exercises and things for you to um, practice Java with. So just double check. Okay, I have no um, comments and stuff so far. Um, so those are the two main ones I would recommend. In fact, I would I would recommend Exorcism uh, above HackerRank just because it's a bit nice, m more nicely laid out. And then something like Code Wars and Google Code Jam, they're more based on the concept of competitive programming. So if we go to Code Wars, you'll you'll see over here. Um, you can start coding, so you'll log in, and then there's sets of problems. So there's like problem sets, um, and you'll complete the pro problem sets, and you'll achieve like ranks and points and whatever. Um, but the problem with, 
with uh, Code Wars is it's more related to competitive programming and less to practicing Java. Um, so I would first recommend uh, Exorcism, then HackerRank, then Code Wars. So uh, this is my my big um, my big uh, suggestion. And then finally down here is something called Project Euler. Um, Project Euler is for like really difficult programming problems. So I think there is, um, oh, I think there's a hundred problems, something like that. Um, but they keep putting up more and more difficult problems. I think if you go to about, you can see there are, uh, sorry, eight, what, 801 problems just, just for the first page. Um, or just for the whole project. So if you go over here, you can start with the first problem and it tells you uh, the problem specification and then you try and solve it, right? So these are like increasingly difficult problems. If you go down here, you'll see like solve the Fermat uh, equation with code. Um, this is for more, more advanced programming and less practice. All right, so the, that's like the, the programming practice, kind of easiest to most difficult. Um, I would recommend starting here. All right. Then um, some people were interested in game development and I suggested libgdx. Libgdx is a Java library and there's a whole bunch of very cool stuff that's been built in libgdx. Um, there's games like Slay the Spire, Mindustry, and in fact, uh, Mindustry is actually, the source code is available on GitHub. So if you go to GitHub, you can download the um, source code and hack on it yourself. Uh, you can also see over here, there um, are contributors. So uh, you can go over to the issues um, and they'll have like all the issues that, they're, that's, that they've solved and so on. Um, so it's very useful to kind of look at someone else's code base and see like what they've done. So if you go through the code, you can go into core, source, and they've got a whole bunch of stuff here, right? So like if you're interested in graphics, you can go look at like what are they doing in the graphics. Um, there's a menu renderer, load renderer, and all that stuff, right? Um, so very cool. And Mindustry is built with, uh, like I said, libgdx. So um, there's a whole bunch of other ones, but libgdx itself has very good documentation for how to get started. And uh, if you're interested in game development, I would recommend trying it out. Then um, there is a Cornell um, open online course. So um, Cornell University in the United States will run you through how to code with libgdx um, using IntelliJ. So IntelliJ is that, that IDE, right? Um, so let me just close this stuff for now. Uh, I wanted to keep uh, this one open. And then, so you can go to the libgdx website. You can go through the wiki. It's very good. You can go to getting started, um, which will run you through a tutorial from like how to set up your dev environment um, generating a project and creating like a very simple game. Um, let me just double check. I don't have any comments so far. If you have any questions, feel free to interrupt at any point um, and we'll, I'll try to address it. Then if you're um, less interested in game development and more in the like low level graphics programming kind of uh, generative art or any of that sort of stuff, um, I would recommend looking at something called processing. Uh, processing is a very interesting project where you can do quite cool um, graphics programming with it. Uh, I would especially try to implement on your own the Conway's Game of Life. Um, and processing by general, uh, by, by general, processing in general uses um, kind of like a dialect of Java. Um, so if you look over here, this is the, the processing language, or at least the scripting language that they use. So every processing, um, every processing class has a setup function that sets the size of the canvas. 
then it has a draw function and this draw function gets called like every single frame. So it's trying to render, it'll call all this code, but you can also, you know, create like your own methods. So like a special draw method, which we call over here, if show grid, draw grid. And so you can draw this thing over here, right? So it's very, very cool. There are quite a few um, interesting, quite a few interesting examples. So you can do kind of like 3D perspective cameras, you can do array objects and gradients and very, very cool stuff. Um, people do things that are very interesting where they add like background images and transparency and all, all, the, all sorts of stuff. So um, I would highly recommend looking at processing if you're interested in graphics uh, and doing cool, maybe like generative art or art installations. The other thing over here is Java OpenGL. So um, someone asked me the other day, how do you go about writing Minecraft mods? Something like that. Um, there, is, there is a whole community surrounding writing Minecraft mods. Um, but Minecraft itself was originally developed by um, Notch using Java and Java OpenGL. So OpenGL is a graphics uh, a graphics API that is a standard that's implemented in a whole bunch of graphics drivers. Um, so you can go through this tutorial over here and it will teach you kind of like low level um, graphics setups. So um, oh, I don't know why that's broken, um, but you can learn how to code a whole bunch of stuff and it's based off of something called learn open GL. So um, learn OpenGL is mainly done in C++, but uh, you can set it up and kind of run in parallel with, um, with Java. So um, with Java, you would just use slightly different libraries, um, but it runs you through like everything you need to do know in order to do really cool um, graphics programming on like a lower level. So this is if you want to write your own renderer or like processing type um, system. All right. So then the other one and probably the most common um, use of Java when people just start out is something like Android development. Android development is actually made really, really well, uh, really easy uh, by Google and friends um, because it comes with its own IntelliJ flavored uh, IDE called Android Studio, and their developer their developer platform documents are actually really really good. So um, if you go here, you can go to like download Android Studio, uh, and you can do a whole bunch of tutorials on how to do like your first app. Kind of go through the developer guides and so on. It might also be interesting. Um, if you're looking at learning maybe another language, another programming language, to have a look at something called Kotlin or Kotlin. Uh, Kotlin runs on the JVM. So it, it's a different language that compiles to Java bytecode and runs on the JVM. So let me just go to, I think it's here. So you have like a slightly different um, syntax but ultimately it, it runs on the JVM and you can use Kotlin for Android programming as well. But I would highly recommend going over and um, picking out the documentation. You can go to the guides and like go through everything. It'll teach you from start to end what you need to know to build Android apps. And it can be quite, um, it can be quite uh, rewarding to do this because if you have like your own personal tools, you can just start start building on your ideas. Um, something else I forgot to add, but will now is OpenCV. So OpenCV is for computer vision, uh, and you can do it with Java as well. So I think over here in resources, um, you can look at the library. Um, let me just double check. But essentially, OpenCV has, you can mix OpenCV with kind of AI, um, AI stuff and then deploy them on Android uh, apps. So you can actually build OpenCV projects like augmented reality 
um, and then deploy it onto Android apps. So I think under tutorials, um, let me just make sure we do the Java documentation and I'll add this link as well. So under the Java documentation, they've got a whole bunch of stuff like ma the machine learning documents and everything. Um, so OpenCV is very, very cool. Also uses uh, Java. Yeah, so let's do this and I'll make sure to add that over here under graphics, uh, open CD. Right, and then there's app development and then there's something like web development. Um, Java is not really a front end language so much. However, a lot of companies, especially ones here, like big, big internet companies in Cape Town, end up using Java for a lot of their cloud platforms. I know um, from friends working there that at the Oracle Cloud Development Center, there is a lot of Java being used behind the scenes. So I've linked to this uh, Geeks for Geeks article, which kind of introduces you to um, a more realistic um, server kind of content serving project. Um, and then you can have like, you know, get parameters and, and serve uh, pages from templates and stuff. And you can eventually build out like your own little content management system. Um, it also goes into databases. And specifically, I think um, MySQL or Oracle SQL um, databases, which is also pretty useful. So this is like for writing the backend software of a uh, Java technology. And then the other thing that you can do with Java that's kind of network and web related is sockets programming. So uh, sockets are like network um, interfaces that you can use. Um, so you can write socket servers and this lets you do things like write a game server or a messaging server um, and you can kind of send, create sockets and there's a whole bunch of things you can do with these. Like you can create a voice chat server and all those things, but you would start understanding um, sockets and how to program sockets with Java. Um, so those are the two big ones. And then um, when you kind of have, like if you wanna mix app development and, and web or socket programming, uh, you would end up working on something like Signal. So if you go to, um, GitHub again, you can go to the uh, Signal app, and I think it is, uh, just do this. Uh, and then over here, Signal, the, the messaging app uh, for Signal, is actually written for Android in Java. And it's one of the biggest, um, it's one of the biggest uh, Java open source projects on GitHub. So if you have a look down here, they'll tell you, okay, cool, you can download Signal, you can join the beta, or you can contribute code. And if you want to contribute code, they can tell you kind of how to do that, like um, making issues, trying to build new developer builds, and so on, right? Um, so they have a whole section over here, how can you contribute, uh, and you can, can actually have a look there. But something you'll see is that a lot of Java projects have this like Gradle thing over here. They have a build.gradle file or like a Gradle properties and something. Um, that's called a build system. And so Gradle is like the de facto Java build system. So if you wanna build like really large Java projects or at least learn how to manage your own Java projects, um, I would recommend you have a look at something like Gradle. Over here in Gradle, they have documentation and you can just like learn through tutorials what you wanna do. Uh, Gradle is mainly targeted for Java, but they also do Kotlin, C++, Groovy. Uh, I think this is Scala and JavaScript. So there's a whole bunch of stuff you, you can do with it and it's pretty flexible. And then finally, um, there are things like called design patterns. So um, design patterns might, if you want to learn while also practicing Java, I would recommend um, learning some design patterns. There are things like an abstract factory, a builder, 
um, the composite design pattern and so on, uh, decorators and prototypes, like these are all uh, very interesting design patterns. And for each of these, you can look at like, what is their usage in Java? And you can see here that um, the abstract factory defines an interface for discreting uh, all distinct products, but leaves the actual product creation to concrete factory classes. So this meshes with what you learned last week and this week with uh, abstract classes. And they give you a whole bunch of code and they kind of talk you through like what they do and how they work, right? So uh, very interesting. I would have a look at the design patterns in Java uh, page if you're interested. DigitalOcean also has an article on it, which is pretty good, um, all things considered. So Java design patterns, theirs is a bit more linear and they kind of um, they kind of lay it out like a factory pattern, a singleton, an abstract factory, builders, prototypes, and then the other, the other things. Uh, something you might find interesting is the factory pattern if you're looking for a place to start, right? So you have a superclass with multiple subclasses and based on input, you need to return one of the subclasses, okay? So um, those are kind of the key resources over there. If you have any questions or if you want any recommendations that don't cover a topic that I've done here, please feel free to ask. Um, otherwise, I will open up the session to general questions, answers, uh, and comments. Um, so, <clears throat> Um, for for any of the um, things that you recommend now, especially like um, LibGDX, yeah, with the courses uh, as, as well as Cornell's um, courses, mm -hmm. do 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 they allow? Well, do they provide like um, sort of certifications the way Udemy or the other other platforms? where you can get these courses as well. Yeah, um, um, as far as I'm aware, the LibGDX won't, won't have like certification for LibGDX. Um, the certification of LibGDX is more, um, is more like you've built a game, right? Um, but I think for Cornell, um, I'm not sure they do have certification. But if you're looking to certify in Java or something, I would actually recommend Exorcism. Exorcism and Hacker Rank. Um, <clears throat> I would have to double check if they give you like a digital certificate, but I know Hacker Rank can do like, um, you can attach it to your LinkedIn profile. And if you've completed like the Java core problems, then it will give you like a digital certificate. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Any other questions? Sir, mm -hmm. in um, task two of the assignment, uh -huh. uh, let me just get it, sorry. It will say like um, uh, the class, oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Um, Wait, wait, wait. I think it's part one. Of yeah. the assignment four. It's a class four. called Ride. Sorry? Of assignment four, task one, yeah? Yeah. It says a class called Ride Record with the following attributes. Um, is that a public class? Uh, yes. Yeah, all of these okay. are public. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Unless we specify something as private, if you, you assume everything is public. And then, unless otherwise stated over here, all attributes should be private or protected. So these, okay. these classes are all public. Um, and then the attributes are all private, unless we say they're public. Okay. Yeah. So Thank you should, you. yeah, you're more than welcome. So some of these, uh, it would make sense to maybe have them protected, but that's up to you. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, no, I'm good. 
Okay. So just for anyone that joined a bit later, um, next week or uh, tomorrow, so let's actually put some dates down. I think tomorrow is the 13th. So tomorrow the 13th, we start with uh, revision. And then the 14th, which is Friday, will be a question and answer session. Then um, I think it's, let me double check my dates. Then the 17th, Monday the 17th will be revision two to the 19th will be revision three three and then the 20th the test will open or become available so test available and then the 21st the test will be uh, closing so this will open at 12 noon and it will close at 12 noon okay so I'll, I'll make an announcement after this lecture of everything you need to know for the test and then the last day of term will be the last day of term will be the 24th um, and on that day, we can do a test uh, Q&A and just like a general hangout if anyone is interested. Okay, is everyone clear on that, on that schedule? Yes. Okay, awesome. So unless you have uh, questions or um, suggestions or anything now, uh, feel free to enjoy the rest of your afternoon and I will see you tomorrow for the beginning of revision. This will be tomorrow revision one. All right. Have yourself an excellent afternoon and take care of yourself. Try to get your work done in a reasonable amount of time and try not to stress about it too much. Um, I do have a question. When I first learned object-oriented programming, was it easy? No. <laughs> um, when I first learned object-oriented programming, it was in first year of university. And I must say, I did struggle with Java quite a bit. But luckily, I've had lots of years to practice and to wrap my head around it. Um, so now I, I get to teach it. So say you are saying as, as we go on, it will get better and better. Yes, make sure you keep, so the core stuff that you need to know now for the course, make sure you understand it. But um, what I want to say is it, it will make more sense altogether. The more you practice it, the longer you know it, if that makes sense. All right, so yeah. no, it makes sense. Yeah. So you should so, so you do you don't want to go work. Me, I do, yeah. <laughs> I'm currently finishing up my masters and I'm also working for a company overseas doing uh, machine learning research. So but I, I really enjoy teaching as well, so I get I get the opportunity to teach you. Um, which I'm very thankful for. So you can manage everything? Uh, with difficulty, <laughs> uh, with good time management and with difficulty, yeah. Oh God, no, thank you. Yep, you're more than welcome. Any other questions or comments? Uh, so, um, <clears throat> so, um, once once uh, our year is done, uh, mm -hmm. my plan right now is to then sit with um, like the game development thing. Mm -hmm. right? Is and, that yeah? And um, I was just wanted to know, um, would it be wise for me to? Uh, so with the game development, I'm learning uh, 
not with Java, mm-hmm. but I'm learning with uh, C Sharp. So because that's what uh, Udemy, or not Udemy, Unity 3D, mm-hmm. the game engine uh, utilizes yeah. to run the, to run the, um, the game engine for mm-hmm. the, so the code is obviously C Sharp. Yeah. Um, I know that the language is kind of similar, it's just that the syntax is somewhat changed, but um, it overall is very similar to to Java. Yeah. So, um, would you, what is your advice for me to, well, in terms of me going forward with my game development and that, um, would it be wise for me to continue just, um, just doing game development in Java to practice Java or should I just continue with, the, with what the Udemy course is going through with the... Yeah. So I think um, I would continue with what the Udemy course is doing. Uh, but something you should maybe know is that C Sharp is Microsoft's version of like a C language, right? Um, so C Sharp has something called a C-like syntax, and that's where you have things like public, uh, name, and curly braces, right? So it looks very similar. C Sharp also has like a couple of language quirks, but what I would say to you is if you're already doing Unity, don't, don't worry about now switching to libgdx just so you can code in Java. Just keep going with Unity. Because the other thing that you'll learn when you do Unity, um, when you do Unity, you'll learn uh, game mechanics and game programming. So um, in video game design, there's something like game mechanics, right? So mechanics. And under that, there's um, movement, movement, uh, you know, like sprites and um, things like that so and cameras right like how you work with cameras and rendering so these are all these are all like concepts uh, in game design and if you do it in unity with c sharp or in libgdx with um, java right? These concepts stay this relatively the same. So what I would say is if the course you're doing is in C sharp and with unity, keep at it. And then later on, if you want, you can try and apply those things you learned to libgdx with Java. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. And then, you know, people build their own game engines all the time or um, something else that is quite nice is a game engine called Godot. So uh, the Godot game engine uses a scripting language that's a lot like Python. And have a look over, I think we can just go to learn, um, 3D game, we have coding the player. So they have like a scripting language which you can use to do things. So it doesn't really matter what, what you should get from that game development course is the mechanics and an understanding of how, how games are typically built. Thank you so much, sir. You're more than welcome. Any other comments or questions? Okay, if there's nothing else, let me just double check the thing. If there's nothing else, feel free to have a, a wonderful day. I'll hang around in case someone does have a question about the assignments or anything. Um, but otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day, and tomorrow we'll start with revision. Thank you very much.